Welcome. Welcome, everyone. My name is Susanna McDermott. I'm the Director of Communications of the Interfaith Center on Corporate Responsibility. On behalf of uh, our, my, ourselves and our co-host, uh, the Office of Sustainability at Xavier University, we want to welcome you to Invested in Change. I'd like to invite our co-host, Ann Doherty, up to, uh, to give us some welcoming words. Good evening, good evening, hi. Um, welcome to Xavier University first. We are pleased um, that Interfaith Center on Corporate Responsibility uh, wanted to come to Cincinnati, and they're really pleased that they wanted to create this panel tonight and that they wanted to have it with us. Xavier is committed, many in this room know this, but we'll say it again, Xavier is committed to working with and for our community on issues that matter, issues like the global human issue of climate. Um, we want to invest in change with everyone here. Um, I reflect on this question, what is my job in this? What do I need to do to act? I reflect on the question, when exactly should I start doing something? My answer to myself is, uh, I need to get going now right now. And so I propose to everyone here tonight that our job is to come out of tonight with some ideas because we need to get working and we need to get working together. Welcome. Yeah. Okay, we started out with a real call to action. Thank you, Anne, that's wonderful. So our discussion today is about the three C's of climate, capital, and the power of collaboration. If you're here today, it's likely because you're really interested in how those three C's intersect with one another. And you're probably also, we're hoping, uh, wanting to learn what you can do in your personal life, in your professional life, as Anne has just said, uh, to have an impact on this, this very, very important issue. Members of the Interfaith Center on Corporate Responsibility have been asking themselves what they can do on climate change for nigh on 30 years now. The Interfaith Center on Corporate Responsibility is a coalition of over 300 institutional investors who collectively represent more than 100 billion in assets under management. Our members use their collective voice as shareholders to help influence corporate decision making on questions of environmental and social importance. Seeing what might lie ahead if greenhouse gas emissions weren't brought under control as early as 1984, our members began engaging fossil fuel and energy companies, requesting that they reduce their carbon emissions and implement plans to begin the transition to greener, more sustainable energy sources. While the business case was made on the basis of the financial risk to the companies and in an extended way to our portfolios, because the majority of our members are faith-based organizations and socially responsible investors, the motivation was also clearly a moral one. With missions on the ground in some of the world's most vulnerable communities, we know all too well climate change's ability to exacerbate conditions of poverty, health, and food and water scarcity. After 600 shareholder resolutions and likely twice as many dialogues with management, we're seeing companies in carbon intensive sectors adapting their business plans to address the climate crisis. These risks will be felt by all companies and their supply chains, and each day companies fail to address them makes them more costly and intractable. Forward-thinking companies know this. But given increasingly dire predictions from climate scientists, we also know more has to be done, and it has to be done faster. And perhaps we need to do things differently as well. Importantly, we need to find ways to leverage the gifts and resources we all have, share them with one another, and work more collaboratively, collaboratively together. That's what today's discussion is about, and we are hopeful it will inspire our ideas and actions from all of us today, as Anne said, here, today, now, in Cincinnati, and beyond. ICCR has just published a paper titled Invested in Change. Laura has requested that I show it to you. Here it is. And while our environmental
conscience will not permit us to distribute printed copies to each of you today. I hope you will forgive us. We did print the fine little postcards that you saw on your chairs when you walked in, which will give you a very good idea what this paper is about. We urge you to visit our website. It's on the home page of iccr.org. Download it, read it. We hope it will be useful to you. Share it with your constituents. It is intended as a tool for investors who are interested in how they can better manage their assets to catalyze change on this issue. Before I introduce our moderator and panel, a couple of uh, housekeeping items, light housekeeping items. Uh, you need to know, if you haven't noticed, that today's session is being videotaped. Uh, for the most part, that will, the, I think the views are being confined to the panelists. In addition, we have a photographer here, which will, and she'll be taking pictures. If anybody has any questions about how these images are going to be used, they will be posted on our website publicly, and we do intend to use them in our publications. If anybody has any questions around that, please see me. Today's event is the result of the hard work of many people. ICCR would like to especially thank our co-hosts, Xavier's Office of Sustainability and chiefly Ann Doherty. Ann and her team have been especially generous and gracious, and their help has been absolutely invaluable in pulling together today's event. Huge thanks to the members of the Planning Committee and our members and friends from the Region 6 Coalition for Responsible Investment. Many of you are here today. We also owe an enormous debt of gratitude to the Sisters of Charity, who through their SC Ministries Foundation provided the financial and moral support that made this event possible. We're really grateful to all of you for this opportunity to be here today. Thank you so much. Um, because I'm a communications person, I'm afraid I can't step out of that role too far. I would like to encourage everybody here to get the conversation going. If you are a tweeter on Twitter, please tweet using the hashtag invested for change, invested in change, sorry, and uh, post to Facebook. Let's, let's really generate a conversation, post your comments, your photos, your questions, and we'll keep it going afterwards as well. And now allow me to introduce our moderator, Carolyn Washburn, who will be shepherding our discussion today. Carolyn has been Vice President and Editor of the Cincinnati Enquirer since January 2011, and prior to this role, has had a distinguished career in journalism at many newspapers, including the Des Moines Register, the Lansing State Journal, and the Rochester Democrat and Chronicle. Carolyn serves on the Professional Advisory Board for the University of Iowa School of Journalism and Mass Communication. She is a member of the American Society of Newspaper Editors, an online news association. Carolyn was awarded Gannett's Chairman Ring and was their Editor of the Year in 2008. Please join me in welcoming Carolyn and our panelists. For, uh, thanks for having us. Uh, someone asked me a little while ago, why me? Why am I doing this? Why am I here? <laughs> um, you know, what journalism fundamentally is about is helping people uh, have the right information in context, help them talk about it in a way that is effective, and help them use it. And there are lots of ways we do that. Some of that is by publishing newspapers or websites or using social media. And sometimes it's coming out of all the pages and coming out into real life and helping people have conversation. And so um, I'm really, uh, really grateful to have the opportunity to do that. Um, and probably uh, my sort of first big experience with the climate change discussion was when I was in Des Moines. Um, editor of the Des Moines Register during that presidential Iowa caucus season in 2007 uh, and had the fortune or misfortune, depending on how you view it, to moderate two presidential debates in Iowa that year. And uh, we had been, the candidates had been in Iowa for a year talking at that time about Iraq and immigration and all the things that were hot news. So when we got around to time to do the debates and the candidates had been in the state for a year talking to voters, we polled Iowans and said, 
what do you want us to ask the candidates about? What do you want to hear more about? And it was not Iraq or immigration because they knew where the candidates stood by that point. They wanted to talk about climate change and other things. Unfortunately for me, the candidates were not so excited to talk mm. about climate change. And uh, there was some um, <clears throat> good back and forth and contentious conversation, but it was just, it was enlightening to me um, what a stressful conversation that was, and it still is. But hopefully uh, we'll advance the conversation a little bit more with the panel. Um, I am going to ask these folks to introduce themselves, and then I am gonna throw out discussion topics, essentially, and they are going to talk to each other and ask each other questions as we go. So, Len, why don't you start? Sure. Uh, thank you, good evening, I'm Len Sowers. I'm the Vice President of Global Sustainability for the Procter & Gamble Company. Um, I hope I don't have to introduce P&G to this audience, but I'll just make a couple of comments. We're the largest consumer products company uh, in the world, 80-some uh, billion dollars in sales. Uh, our products are sold in 180 countries. Five billion people use P&G products every day, and we have manufacturing facilities in 140 countries. Um, and as the head of sustainability at P&G, I have overall accountability for the program. I set the long-term vision for the company, set the goals for the company, and then make sure we deliver on them. Hello, um, my name is Anas Malik. I'm an associate professor of political science here at Xavier University. I'm also an affiliated faculty member with the Ostrom Workshop for Institutional Analysis and Design at Indiana University in Bloomington. My work is on governing the commons in contexts of Islam and political economy. And I'm particularly interested in interreligious relations and the possibilities for enhancing the prospects for collective action on issues like climate change. Hello everyone and good evening. My name is David Zellner. I am responsible for managing the investment assets of the United Methodist Church benefit programs. We manage assets for 91,000 active and retired participant and lay employees of the United Methodist Church. We are the largest single collection of investment assets uh, among faith-based investors. We are responsible for managing $21 billion in assets. Thank you all for being with us tonight. Good evening, everyone. I'm Laura Berry. I'm the Executive Director of the Interface Center on Corporate Responsibility. And my role, really, is to spark conversations as well, is to find a way to be a build, bridge builder, because in our work, we are very much about thinking through the question of how do we bring moral questions to the marketplace? How do we encourage each other to be better investors, to be better companies, to be better citizens? And the Interface Center has been doing this for nearly 45 years. And we're just delighted that all of you are here this evening for this conversation and so grateful to our panelists and to everyone that worked so hard to put this together. So I'll stop there. All right, our first point of uh, discussion is a bit of context. I'm a believer in starting with context. So ICCR started its work on climate change about 25 years ago. So what's been achieved? What have been the disappointments? What's next? What will be easy about what's next? What will be the hurdles in what's next? Put, put it in some framework, and Laura, we'll start with you, but you've all experienced this over time, and I'd like you to all talk about it. Well, Carolyn, I think embedded in that question <laughs> is a huge amount of depth. And I think that the first real success is creating a model. There, for a very long time, corporations have been around for 400 years. And they were created with really a social contract get, to get done for society what society could not do itself. 400 years ago, we had monarchies that could take care of that for us. And so, in the minds of ICCR members and all of the folks we work with, the idea that a corporation still has that social contract is very, very important. And so I think over the 25 years that we've been working on climate change, we first raised the idea that civil collaborative conversation 
can go on between shareholders and the companies in which they invest. And I think, you know, not to, not to pick on Len, but I think P&G is a wonderful example of a long-term relationship talking about important issues, including climate change, where a tremendous amount of progress has been made. But I think at the end of the day, ICCR has been unique. And I would dare to say it has a lot to do with our roots in faith-based communities. We've been unique in that we believed a model could be built. We believed that you could start from what Simon Zadek says is sort of the disgruntlement when a company says, climate change, it's not our problem. We make sponges and move that company along a continuum where you arrive at a place like leaders, like P&G, who say not only is it our responsibility to work on the, these things and be a responsible corporation, but through our voice and through our global reach, we influence far beyond our own customers, far beyond our own sector, to really raise it to a, a, a sense of civil responsibility, I would say. And I think that's what ICCR has done best. Believe a model could be created, build those bridges, demonstrate civic and civil dialogue, and keep the conversation going, as I hope we do today. And I think maybe if I could just add first, thank you very much for the kind words, um, but we've appreciated very much the relationship we've had with ICCR over these many years. Um, P&G's been around 180 years, not quite 400, but I still think we, uh, we have a, a lot to be proud of. But, and it's because of that intent of always wanting to do the right thing as a foundation for the company uh, is a reason for that long-term success. And you know the issues of sustainability. I mean, are, are great. I mean, they can feel overwhelming sometimes, and that's why P&G wants to be part of the solutions. And you know, we have a sustainability program that we believe is helping to address these solutions. But I think we're the first to admit that we we don't know everything. We don't have all the answers. So we reach out constantly to stakeholders to come in and help us because we value that input very much. Um, and we have many stakeholders, ICCR, one of our most valued ones. We also have some of the environmental NGOs, WWF and, and whatever, who help us frame our programs in a way that I think makes them most successful. And we've taken advice from you guys over the years. It's been wonderful advice and hope it's we continue it uh, going forward. Uh, some of the members said that we need to kind of get together here soon, have another meeting. So I look forward <laughs> to it, so yeah. So Len, what's changed for you all over time? Well, I think the idea of, you know, when I've been with P&G nearly 30 years, and, um, you know, in, in the early days, we saw sustainability as an issue to be managed, okay? And I think over time, what you're seeing is we've evolved that thinking into seeing sustainability now as a business strategy, something that actually now builds the business of the company. Um, it helps the bottom line through cost savings, a lot of the eco-efficiency work that we've done. I mean, we, we emit less greenhouse gas emissions today from our operations uh, today. Um, we emit less today than we did 10 years ago, even though the company's business has grown by $20 billion through this eco-efficiency. That's all cost savings to the company. So as part of the business strategy, sustainability is helping the bottom line. Sustainability is also helping the top line by the development of sustainable products that consumers now buy, increasing sales. So when you change that attitude from being a issue to be managed, which is largely a cost to the company, to an integrated business strategy and an opportunity that drives sales and helps the bottom line where you're making money, you get a pull for it within the organization. And I think that's been that change over time, is just that philosophical change. Now, it makes it difficult sometimes because, you know, as you embark on sustainability programs, you know, you, they need to have cost parity with, with things. Your return on investments all need to be the same. So there's challenges associated with that. Um, but when you can make it work, it really does. All right, I'll make some comments. Laura and I have had conversations over the years about the progress that the ICCR investment community has made with regard to moving companies to have a more sustainable footprint. And 
I like to say things provocative that are provocative. I mean, the whole idea here is to get the conversation moving forward. 